Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, my little degenerates. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, back at it again for another video. And ooh, we, I finally am back from my vacation to Orlando, Florida to see, go to Disney World. It was so amazing. I enjoyed every minute of being in Disney World, even though it was expensive as fuck. I enjoyed every minute of Disney World. But that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about the Summer Game Fest games that were announced, a bunch of announcements. Uh, Summer Game Fest, of course, is run by Jeff Keighley, and Jeff Keighley went to Twitter, the worst place to get opinions from, by the way. Uh, and he asked, he genuinely asked the question, what do people think of his Summer Games Fest? And I gotta say, <laughs> that was the wrongest choice he could have made, but... He, he decided he made it and they ate him alive <laughs> and uh, a lot of people thought it was pretty bad uh, me personally as someone who didn't watch it live so I had more of an opportunity to like re-watch it watch it from beginning to end and, and whatnot. Um, I would say it was very just like PlayStation very lackluster not bad by any means but kind of like eh, okay this could have been shorter um so that's just my thoughts but we just gonna go straight into this video and i just gotta say i just gotta say if you don't want to hear me talk a, a whole lot all you have to do it's just use the timestamp below to focus on the game that you want to hear me talk about the most and i will leave it in the description box below without further ado we're just gonna run through a bunch of these games really fast because jeff announced a lot and yeah uh let's just get straight to it but before we begin let's talk about uh what jeff Kelly said at the very beginning of the um at the conference he talked about the layoffs the big layoffs that's happening and as you know one of the biggest layoffs that happened this year was tango gameworks uh, uh place uh xbox studio i should say uh got shut down and that literally got a bunch of awards with high five rush and now it's gone uh, i talked a lot about it in my video so you can go check out how i felt about it um but one of the things that i thought um, Jeff did so well was bringing up the fact that you know a lot of the top five or the top ten best games of this year were not triple A games so far. They have literally been um, these amazing second double uh, A studios, indie developers making these wonderful, cool games that people are still playing up to this day. And I think it was a good way to show these developers and point to them and say, hey, you guys need to stop focusing on these big triple A experience. Like those are awesome, those are great, but take a, tr a, a risk with these fucking guys because there's the one that's the future of gaming. These are the guys that's gonna make you a big fucking bunch of money and shit. And for Jeff to say that, to me, that was fucking awesome. And it kind of slightly redeemed Jeff in my eyes, Jeff Keighley in my eyes for for that, because he did fuck up greatly with the with the uh, with the fucking game of the year and not allowing people to uh, to talk a lot. So for him to do this was very nice. But let's just get straight into the games. I'm sorry I just went on that tangent, but let's get straight into the games. So first first games first, Lego Horizon Adventures. Um. I gotta say, I, I I generally gotta say, uh, I don't know what the fuck, <laughs> I don't, I knew people like Horizon, but I never thought we loved it as much to get a Lego game, like I can always see PlayStation doing a Lego game for God of War, or maybe even The Last of Us. But a fucking Horizon? Is Horizon that that popular to people? Is that beloved by people? I, I don't know. 
Um, I know I like it, but not to that extreme. Like, I don't know. I think I would have been way more impressed if it was God of War. If it was God of War, I'd have been like, oh, this is fucking fun. Let's go get it. But it's a rise, and I'm just like, mm, I don't know. Uh, again, that's weird, but yeah, uh, it's coming out later this year, coming to the PC and Switch day one in 2024 i think that's very fascinating because playstation literally said or the new ceos of playstation literally said that um like don't expect day and date games but yet this is a day and date game maybe this is because um this is a lego game and they're like okay well we want to make sure that a bunch of people get their hands on a, on a Lego game. They don't have that much faith in this. In this, there's just kind of like an experiment. So yeah, I'm I'm just more confused on why um, it's not timed exclusive. But it is what it is. I guess again, they don't care for it that much. So it is what it is. Now, this game looks like left for dead but it's uh so it's a pv or uh, permadeath game i'm about to say pvp uh it's a permadeath game um and i'm just like huh that's actually kind of interesting uh and it's eight player co-op uh it's going into early access really really soon or right now and yeah it just looks interesting it looks interesting i don't know if i would necessarily play it but kind of cool that we having a, a permadeath zombie game that, that would be kind of interesting hopefully it turns out well uh next we have harry potter um quidditch champion uh this i'm looking forward to because as much as I'm not into Harry Potter like that, I love Quidditch. I love Quidditch. I remember the PlayStation 2 game had a Quidditch game, and it was fucking awesome. Uh, it was fucking awesome. And one of my biggest complaints in Harry Potter, uh, in Harry Potter uh, Hogwarts Legacy, is that Hogwarts Legacy was fucking like, ugh. It, it was a great game, but damn, like, where the fuck was, where the fuck was my, where the fuck was my shit, man? Where the fuck was my shit? Where was, where was, where was the Quidditch? I was asking myself, where's Quidditch? And they denied it, so it is what it is. Uh, but I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully it's pretty good. It comes out September the 20, oh, September the 3rd. 2024 it looks like uh, and it's coming to both all the consoles however however it will be uh, free for PlayStation Plus um, essential people so if you have PlayStation Plus essential you'll get it for free I'm gonna be on board with that shit so it don't even matter uh, next but not least, we got Cuff, uh, Cuff Bus. Uh, this game was kind of cute when I saw it. I was like, man, this game is fucking adorable. Uh, it's basically Shang Shang, uh, Shang Shang Redemption, but with uh, with cutesy animal. Like you're trying to get out of prison with your friends. <laughs> so that's 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 kind of cute. I could definitely. This is very much a streamer game. So we'll we will definitely see. I can't wait to see like YouTubers like actually stream this with their friends. Cause it, it looks like that type of game that's gonna be fun with friends. No release date, but it did say 2000 and 2025. So we will see. Next uh Star Wars Outlaw. Honestly, after watching the Ubisoft forward, um I honestly would say, and hearing a bunch of people talk about this game, 
other people who got their hands to talk about it. I'm not that impressed with this game still. Uh, I feel like this is going to just be more of just Ubisoft nonsense, but I will say I do like the choice system of how you want to be as a, uh, a outlaw. Uh, so, you know, that's, that, that is something that I'm very interested in seeing. But other than that, I could care less. Uh, and I, I, and again, it's just Ubisoft. I don't trust them to get anything fucking right. Or I trust them to get things done to the bare minimum. Uh, and also, I'm not a huge, I'm still not a huge fan of the pricing of this game. But if it's on Ubisoft uh, Plus subscription service, I think that would be kind of cool. Um, the game comes out August the twenty, uh, the twenty seventh. Or I believe August the 30th, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's early access is August the 27th. So if you want the special edition to get early access, you could do that. Um, this game is also coming out for the series consoles, Xbox series consoles, PC and PS5. Moving on. Moving on, we have Neva, or Neva, Neva, or Neva. I am so gonna try this game out. All right, I love the art style. It looks beautiful. Uh, hopefully it plays cool. Uh, it also got um, like hack and slash elements, but man, the art style is just phenomenal. So I'm gonna check that out. Uh, no release date but it is coming out probably later in the year and it is coming to the switch ps5 the siri um the x series consoles uh and pc got civilization 7 i heard this was leaked already so a lot of people already knew it was coming um congratulations for those who care i don't care so it is what it is it's coming out uh next year so look forward to that um black myth Wu, uh, Wu long um another souls game i'm so tired of these fucking souls games if i'm being honest people uh i really want like character action games bro like i i am desperately wanting character actions games to come back Wu long just looks like more um like souls style combat game and i could care very less about that very very less but i know this game was going to be good uh i love the art direction um again we're going we're, we're playing at the, the the fucking monkey king that's dope so i i have faith in this game i saw the collector's edition and the limit and the and the deluxe edition, I, I like the way how they look. Like you get like the band, um, this headband, and for the collector's edition, it's this fucking statue that I have nowhere to put in my room, so I will not be getting it if I do decide to get this game. This game is coming to both PC and PS5. Uh, on here, it also says um, Series X. But I'm not too sure on that. But I guarantee you it's just PS5 and PC. I will double check that on a later date. To see if I'm actually right about that. Once human. Looks like days gone but in a post-apocalyptic us. Uh, world with monsters and shit and i'm just like hmm not really that sold on it but i would have to see more gameplay uh it's coming out july uh july the 9th july the 9th 2024 hopefully it turns out to be great don't have any much to say on that game Next, we have we have 
Warhammer uh, 40, 40k Space Marines 2 every time I see that game it's looking fucking amazing looks like Gears of War so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try it out I'm gonna definitely try it out um, coming uh, September the 9th for PS5, PC, and the Xbox Series consoles. Moving on, uh, Metaphor. This game is at is an Atlas game. It's the Persona team, Day One Cop, um, October the uh, October the the 11th, and it's coming to PS5, PC, and the Xbox Series consoles. Uh, this game is going to also be on game pass so if you do not want to own it or you just want to try it out and see if you're going to like it yeah uh game pass is an option uh we have then arkham shadows arkham shadows uh when when jeff announcement everyone got excited and then like all of a sudden people just got really really fucking upset <laughs> when they when it, when Jeff said it's an Oculus exclusive I'm just like out of all the things these fuckers could done they decided to put it as an Oculus Rift a sequel to the Batman Origins but they decided to put it as a as a VR game okay whatever not playing that shit and then we get to the big fucking announcement the biggest fucking announcement that had me losing my mind street fighter 6 season 2 what the fuck capcom <laughs> what the fuck damn I was not I was not prepared for what they announced at Street Fighter, Street Fighter 6 season season 2. Uh, but they announced their their brand new characters. Uh, and it's going to be M Bison, he's coming out first or at the time of this video he's probably out already or a bunch of people have already played him already. It says M Bison, Terry Bogard from fucking KOF. Then fucking, this one had me like losing it. I was like, what the fuck? Fucking, uh, Eleanor? Is it Eleanor? E e Eleanor? For fucking Street Fighter, Street Fighter Third Strike? And she looks completely different. It looks so fucking cool. Or Elena is her name. And then they said, we ain't gonna just give you one SNK character. We gonna give you another SNK character. Fucking my from fucking KO, bro. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. When I saw that, I was like, "This is fucking amazing! Like, incredible!" I, I was like, "My dream has came through." If you guys have watched my. Street Fighter 6 wish list, guest character wish list. I said it would be incredible for them to do an SNK character, any SNK character, but the obvious one would be Terry Bogard. Uh, he's the most popular SNK character uh, from King of Fighters. Because now this fucking paves the way for. A SNK, uh, a, sh a Capcom fighter character to be in an SNK game, and then if we can do that, then there there's a high possibility we can get we can get SNK versus Street Fighter, Street Fighter versus SNK three. If that shit happens, we fucking win. We we fucking win. And the seeds were planted way long ago. I fucking said it. I called it. I called it. You could go watch that video when I talked about it. I was like, we could do it. And then when fucking um, Comic Con, I mean, not was it Comic Con? No, it was. Uh, it was um, Evo that year when they had the posters of the Street Fighter characters and the, and the SNK characters posed up together. 
and a new art artwork i was like i think they're hinting that we could possibly get it so overall this announcement was fucking awesome man like i was just i was just happy as fuck um uh, because now the 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 future is looking bright for a, a versus series man fuck all that fuck fuck whatever the fuck with marvel versus capcom 3 um or marvel versus capcom 4 you know we could probably still get that but if we can get a fucking cvs game oh man is it will be it'll be lit um uh, tears of, of metal this game uh it looks like braveheart uh, uh kind of looks like braveheart to me uh but it's like rose light so i'm like oh this is kind of cool i'm not really feeling the art style but i think the, the concept of it is really interesting this is coming to pc uh so check it out when it comes out uh this one oh my goodness fucking dragon ball sparking zero oh my goodness we are in there day one this game comes out october the 11th the same day as metaphor uh one of my friends was like oh like that's a bad idea to put it or he doesn't like that and i'm here like you know dragon ball fans are probably not gonna play no fucking metaphor all right all right like people are just so excited for budokai tenkaichi to come back bro and we are we are in there day one i'm gonna get both but man i'm oh oh this game like they just recently came out with a gameplay direct and more people's gotten their chance to play it oh my goodness it is it is fucking fantastic they have a story mode in the game and here's your typical your, your, your typical um, Dragon Ball Z type of story. It's gonna take from Dragon Ball Z all the way up to uh, fucking Super. But they said the coolest thing is, at certain points in the story, you'll be able to choose different options and go in a completely different um, style and order than the original Dragon Ball storyline. So basically, basically what I'm trying to say is that they're going to get a what if mode. We're getting what if stories. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like there was one day it showed off where like, like Krillin died from fighting Vegeta, grade eight Vegeta. And he got Super Saiyan early. And I was like, that's fucking sick. Who, who never thought of that shit should get a fucking raise. <laughs> like really fucking cool shit man I, I i'm looking forward to this there's also like another mode where you can make your own custom battles uh and you can make your own entrance and all that you can make your own little dragon ball story if you want to do it like that and i was like oh my goodness this is fucking awesome like i was like what the fuck they, they put a lot into it. the only complaint i have really honestly is that there is split screen but this split screen seems like this was a last minute add-on uh and so because it wasn't built into the game only the hyperbolic chamber is the only place you can do split screen co-op uh it's kind of funny how gaming has like evolved but also we're kind of like still struggling in certain areas I guarantee you on the PC edition, like people are gonna find out mad crazy shit to do. So, yeah, it, we will be there October the 11th, uh, 2024. You know, be there. PC, PS5, Xbox, Xbox Series X. It's gonna be fucking lit, man. It's gonna be lit. Um, moving on. Black, Black Hawk Down, Delta Force. I mean, it just looks like a, a first-person shooter game. I don't give a fuck about that. Um, moving on, uh, Fatal Fury, uh, City of the Wolves. Um, it, it looks, it looks like 
every time I see this fucking game, every time I see it, it looks and better and better and better. It gets get better and better. I, I just don't know how to keep doing it. It was like like SNK's finally getting their groove back in terms of an art style and making their games look great and not look like a half ass like like double a studio type shit they actually putting some budget into it and it just looks fucking fantastic like i said before if they can add as a guest character a street fighter character it's a fucking rap that means we fucking won that means we can get more um cvs story so let's go and it looks like we're also going to get a little bit of mini games in this game as well so i'm it is what it is then we have Battle Crash. Could give two flying fucks about that. Moving on. Uh, uh, and then, like, um, the Blumhouse team, um, Blumhouse Studio, the guys who do a bunch of horror movies. Uh, the owner, the CEO of Blumhouse, came out and announced that they're getting into the video game marketing and they're going to be doing a bunch of a bunch of games they're going to be making a bunch of horror themed indie games and i was impressed i actually kind of was like really impressed by that so i didn't find a game that really spoke to me but i was like okay cool like that's great that they're getting more involved with that so that's cool oh my god the fucking highlight of the sh this was another highlight of the show fucking mighty morphin power rangers rita's fucking rewind i'm like bruh y'all smoking some shit over there this shit looks fantastic man and i've been dying for a new power ranger game so i'm just like Let's fucking get it, bro. Let's let's just fucking go for it. Like this game is gonna be awesome. Uh, I'm I'm down for it. And it's five player co-op. Oh, we in this bitch. We in this bitch. Um, dear, what the fuck? Oh, dear and boy. Looks like you lost. Ugh. Uh, did not care for this game one bit. So we're just gonna move on from that. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 uh, didn't look bad. I was very taken aback by it because it actually looked like they had some personality. They was cracking jokes and shit. I was like, well, this is way different than what the fuck. What the fuck the first game is. Uh, everyone said the first game was pretty good, but the combat was kind of janky. So it is what it is. Uh, then we have, hmm, then we have, uh, Splitter Mind. Uh, oh, and this was the creator from, uh, of Silent Hill. And he's finally come out with a brand new game. Uh, and it looks janky as fuck. <laughs> but I kind of like the idea that, that you could go and possess people's body and you'll get different moves and, and powers and things it looks very janky as fuck but the concept is really cool so i'm down for it this comes out november the 8th 2024 this one had me fucking jumping for joy um killer bean <laughs> I fucked with this. I fucked with Killer Bean so much. It that movie. I watched the, the the little movie that they had. That shit was so fucking cool. Um, <laughs> uh, Killer Bean, uh, silly as fuck, but I'm down for it, man. Uh, it's coming out early access later this later this year. Cammy, uh, Cannon. It's the climbing game. That they announced but they said it's going to be more survival so you're not going to just be climbing everywhere you actually got to worry about your stamina if you're eating right to like climb up i was like oh this looks really good interesting cool might pick it up 
um, Wander Shop. I called it the PTSD Animal Crossing game. <laughs> yeah, I remember this game now because the way how they presented it was like very much like, yeah, this character is now a fucking uh, now is is doing some gardening and had a really terrible terrible past and shit but now it's all good because you're a fucking farmer <laughs> like i'm like okay then sounds interesting but yeah uh whatever uh it looks interesting though i uh, i'm very curious on what's the character's backstory that made them like yeah i'm gonna be a fucking farmer now um i know nine awakening uh it Funny enough, I it, it, it just looked like it just looks like um, Splinter Mind, but less jank. I was like, you gotta be, you gotta be shitting me. It, it's shit like this. I was just like, yeah, I can see why people was like hate hating on on Jeff Keighley's shit because it's like, how did anybody not look at that and be like, hmm, no. Then we have the last song, uh, which is practically uh, a Bloodsborne game. And I'm just like, oh, this game. Yeah, the last song, it looks like Bloodborne, but with Spain. Uh, and I'm just like, hmm, interesting. Very interesting. And it comes out September the 19th, 2024. Uh, moving on. The First Descendants. That game, oh, I don't know why to me it looks like, why First Descendant reminds me of Vanquish. I have no idea. But, you know, it looks pretty good. But it does look like Vanquish to me. Uh, it comes out... Uh, July the second for early access. Oh, actually, no, it's no, it's no early access. Um, it just comes out July the second. It looks like, actually, no, it don't even look like. Um, I don't even look like. Now that I'm actually looking at the gameplay on my phone, it doesn't even look like like what the game I just said. Uh, it doesn't look like Vanquish, but it does look like Anthem or like what Anthem was trying to be. Very over the top, very exploration focused. And I'm just saying, hmm, interesting. Interesting. It also comes out for PC, PS5 series consoles uh, among us team announced that they will be collaborating with a bunch of indie developers on games to me I love this idea that the indie developers make it big and now they want to give back to other indie developers I think that's fucking fantastic I think that's really wonderful they're calling it uh, outer sloth studio and they're just going to be working with a bunch of other um, other indie developers to get their game out to the public. That is fucking awesome. And I can't wait to see what they come up with. Uh, I couldn't really get a safe tense of the games. I think there was one that was like a, sh a space shooting game that actually kind of looked interesting. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, moving on. Oh, uh, then they showed off a little bit of Among Us, the TV show. Uh, and I'm just like, cool, great. When it comes out, well, well, I'll probably check it out. Uh, the only interesting thing is that that voice cast is impressive. Like they got a lot of big hitters, but to me, the biggest hitter is Ashley Johnson uh voicing a character aka ellie from the last of us <laughs> so i'm looking forward to that um uh, then this is the one that everyone lost their fucking minds including all my friends 
uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations. I'm getting it. Probably won't be playing it, but I'm getting it. October the 25th. It's it's more what you wanted from Generations, and now Shadows involved. Um, there's Shadow shit, and I think that's a really good idea. And I'm gonna explain why I, I think this is a good idea because, uh, as for people who do not know, um, um, Sonic the Hedgehog three the movie is coming very soon, uh, and Keanu Reeves is voicing Shadow, so that's gonna be fucking dope. That's going to be cool. I still have to watch the second movie to figure it out, but whatever. Uh, moving on. We got... Ooh, we got Dune Awakening. Uh, even though I am not into MMOs and I'm not going to play this game, I love the concept already. It is basically a what if uh, Paul Atreides was never born and i was like "Ooh, that's cool so i'm like all right let's see how what this would be and i and i am very much like looking forward to seeing what this would turn out to be so i'm gonna definitely check it out or watch people play it because i actually am curious about it because dune is really good um Battle Aces. What the fuck is this? Battle Aces. What the hell is this dumb shit? Uh, I can't even remember this game. Hmm. Battle Aces. I'm actually looking at my phone. Let's play the game. Yeah. Oh! Battle Aces. Battle Aces. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is made from the team who did the uh, uh, Battle Chef. And I remember, if I'm not mistaken, Battle Aces is what the developer was saying he wanted to do. Actually, Battle Aces is the game that's an RTS game, and I could give two flying fucks. Uh, the finals is getting new update. Uh, so new items, new loadouts, new rank mode, new area, all that fun stuff. Alan Wake 2, we are moving to. I got I got excited with this announcement. Alan Wake 2 will be having a physical release. Thank you fucking Christ. Because Alan Wake 2, I've heard, is an amazing game. But no one wants to buy the shit. And I'm just like, hmm. Interesting. 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 So... I'm happy that it's finally getting a, uh, a, a release, like a physical copy release. And also they announced that there will be some DLCs, three episodic DLCs called Night Springs based off of a little TV, little show. And they're like tie-ins to other games. So one game is, um, is a reference to Control. Another uh, part of the DLC is a reference to um, to another um, Remedy game. It, it, they said it's way more chilled. It's going to be a way more chilled experience than Alan Wake. So I'm looking when I finally do get to Alan Wake. I'm looking forward to trying out this DLC. But yeah, I'm just so happy. I'm happy that they're finally getting um, new content. Um, and also a physical release. Um, going to Battle Ace, a new world, Oasis, Oasis, whatever the fuck this game is called, new world. Uh, it's getting a console port release. Uh, it's coming out October the 
15 uh, on PS5, Series S console, and PC. And we have this game called Dark and Darker. PvP, PvE style game. Could give a fuck about that shit. Don't care. Moving on more. Uh, Capcom. Again, my beautiful Capcom comes out with another game. Um, Path of the Goddess. Um, the more and more I see of this game, the more it just looks like Pikmin. Mixed with Okami, mixed with um, um, Onimusha, and I'm looking forward to playing it. I don't know what's gonna, how it's gonna play, but I'm looking forward to playing it. It comes out uh, July, July the 19th for all the consoles except. The Switch, which sucks. I thought the game could handle the Switch. Um, Hyper Light Breaker. Hyper Light Breaker. I saw this game and I was just kind of like... Don't care. Could care less. But hey, if you like it, go for it uh, hmm. skate four the, how they announced this was fucking awesome uh because they kind of threw a little joke about the layoffs <laughs> in there and i was just kind of like even though i don't think it was a really was a time to be laughing but i actually thought it was kind of funny and then they came out and was like yeah skate four is still in the works don't worry we're, we're not shut down uh in fact we actually have a uh console play test coming in the fall yeah so i'm like oh okay cool moving on pow wall is getting more content added this game is fucking blown up so big um, congratulations for Power World. Um, and it's getting new shit. It's getting an increased level cap. Um, new location. New Pokemon. Um, a raid raid boss. Uh, and it comes out near the end of this month. On the 27th. So check that out. Valorant. Valorant is getting a console release and a beta, a free beta, limited beta is coming very, very soon. Um, Young Gear, Capcom comes with that heat a fucking again. Fucking Monster Hunter Wilds, man. Oh my goodness. This shit looks so fucking cinematic now. It's ridiculous. I was like, this is epic as fuck. Uh, I did watch a few people talk about the game, and they did say that this is like a real true sequel to like Monster Hunter uh, World, and they were like, the shit and the amount of shit you can do in this game is fucking awesome, but they did say that this game needed a little bit more time in the oven because it is a little, a little glitchy, so I I'm... I don't care. I know Capcom's gonna deliver, and I know the Monster Hunter team is gonna deliver. Last but not least, and this one, I I, I owe an apology. Uh, Phantom Blade Zero. This is the sh the game that they ended the show on, and I gotta say, I was like at first I was like, man, this is just another fucking Souls game. I'm tired of this bullshit. And then I watched the developers talk about it. And I was like, yeah, this game's made for me. <laughs> Not only they were like, they were hugely inspired by Devil May Cry. Uh, but they were also inspired by the Souls games and their level design. Where everything's kind of interconnected and multi-layered. But their combat system is way more advanced than any souls game they said um because you can 
dash cancel or cancel out of any animation you want like devil may cry jump cancel and i was like this game is fucking fantastic and when the character is just moving the characters are moving and flipping and dipping i was like oh my goodness this game is fucking cool it almost is like devil may cry and sakura had a fucking baby i was like wow very impressed man i i'm i'm just like yeah now i'm like i'm on the bandwagon now i i can't wait for this shit um overall i would say this if i can say some things about uh the summer game fest i would say this i don't think necessarily the summer game fest was necessarily bad but just like playstation I do find it very lackluster and I think a reason I found it so lackluster is because I do personally feel like as much as I do appreciate that they focus so heavily on the indie side a lot of this shit could have been cut down like a lot of this shit could have been really really trimmed the fat needed to be trimmed there's too much fat in this steak and it just needed to be trimmed down just games that no one gives a fuck about i mean but there were some games that were really cool like street fighter 6 season 2 uh again fucking phantom blade zero looks fantastic some of the indie games they showed off like uh uh cuff bust looks fun uh but man like i was just like yeah some of this shit could have been you know but put into a, a 30 minute trailer and i think we would have gotten the, the gist so overall if i had to rate it i would genuinely give this a six a low six close to like almost a five same grading i would probably give the playstation event with that being said that's going to do it for my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, please comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know what you thought of the Summer Game Fest. And until next time, guys, stay safe and have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, my little degenerates.